Now for all of you that are out there listening, I need you just to close your eyes. And I need you to think about your personal relationship with the Father right now. How good he's been. And family, let's just give God praise. It's time to worship. Oh, lift up, lift up holy hands. Oh, you've been so good to me. All because Jesus, you shed your blood out there on Calvary. You gave your life. Hallelujah. Oh, I need a witness up in here. Good evening. My name is Marion Brock III, and I'm a member of Southside Church of Christ, and I'm, I'm glad to be here with you, and today I will conduct the Bible study. Thank you for allowing me to be in your living rooms today. To those who are actually um, viewing it, um, you know, outside the church and all, I'm hoping that what is said here is encouraging to you and that you will be able to, um, you know, to grow and hopefully this nourish, um, nourish your spirituality. Um, I'd like to thank the leadership at Southside Church of Christ in Montgomery, Alabama, for doing all they possibly can to make this happen in order for us to be in your living rooms today. And I would also like to acknowledge our media team who made this possible, virtually possible to be there with you today. So I'm happy to be able to do that. I'm encouraged and also I'm blessed um, by being able to do this with you today. I want to um, start off by bidding our fathers a happy belated Father's Day. I believe that every day really is a Father's Day. It is an honor it's an, it's, and it is a joy to actually be a father. Um, um, I feel very blessed to do that. And I hope that you fathers out there are, feel the same way, which I know that you will. But one thing that I do know is that our children was actually a, our loners to us and from God in order to be able to do what is right by them, pointing them in the direction of our Lord and Savior so that they can actually live the godly life that God wants them to. Um, Understanding this, I do realize that with that gift come responsibilities. I understand that to be a great father, you have to know God, the Father, and seek Him for guidance. Because I've learned over the years that it can be challenging if you not do, do, do not know who to look to for guidance. For all good parenting begins with the fear of the Lord. And the scripture tells us this. It tells us that in the fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence and his children will have refuge. And that's in Proverbs 14 and 26. The chief job of a father is to teach his kids biblical wisdom at all times. I believe that if your children see you praying, worshiping and seeking counsel from the Lord, they will do the same. And in this day and time, it is important that we model such behavior but in order to do that, we must be in our children's lives. It is very important that our child or our children know to refer to the Lord whenever you're challenged or you're confronted by a foe, to pray for them instead of fight them, pray for them, and, and, and then be that beacon of light that would actually bring them to our Lord and Savior before it's ever too late. Teach them that it is okay to let go and let God, and that it's not about winning winning the battle, but it's about winning the war, understanding that we are in a spiritual warfare. So it is very important that we teach our children. And then the only way we're going to be able to do that, along with actually bringing them to church, is actually show them and lead by examples. Fathers are very central in their children's lives. The way you lead your life can be a blessing to your kids. It is important to do the best you can to lead a godly life. For the Bible tells us in Proverbs 20, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 7, that the righteous who walk in his integrity, blessed are his children after him. Meaning that in life and all, if you live a godly life and if you lead a blessed life, your name will precede you. Your name will be the name that your children will be proud of. Understanding this, I remember my father told me, as his father told him, that 
your name is better than riches and fame. And all, regardless of what you have, it doesn't matter if you don't have a good name. And that name will precede you and also your children, and they would be blessed for that. As a Christian man, I can agree that raising children is challenging in many ways. But at the end of the day, it is the most rewarding and honorable thing you can do. Out of many titles a man can have. I found that the title of father and daddy is the most important one. However, we must acknowledge that it requires patience and faith during the fatherhood journey. It will require us to have patience and the patience of Job in order to be able to make it and satisfy our Lord and Savior. Today, we will get to know Job and the importance of being patient. Now, Job is perhaps the earliest book of the Bible. It was set in the period of the patriarch Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. It tells the story of a man who loses everything, his wealth, his family, his health, and he wrestled with the question, why? Why me? Which is a question that we ask whenever we are are hurt in a certain way or whenever something happens to us and we just don't understand. Understand that Job had gone through the same thing. Now, this book begins with a heavenly debate between God and Satan. It moves through three cycles of earthly debates between Job and his friends, and it concludes with the dramatic divine diagnosis of Job's problem. In the end, Job acknowledges the sovereignty of God in his life and receives back more than he had lost um, um, during his trials and tribulations. Now, today's scripture is going to come from Job chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. And it reads, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, and one who feared God and shunned evil. And seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Also his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yokes of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. And his sons would be and feast in their houses, each on his appointed day, and would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. So it was, when the days of feasting had run their course, that Job would send, the sancti send and sanctify them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts, thus Job did regularly. And understand this, Job during that time had everything a man can wish for. He had a big family, he had a wife, he had sons and daughters, he was in good health, he had property, he had land, livestock, and farm animals. He was a devout follower of God for he prayed a lot and he worshiped regularly. He was a man of good character. Some would say that he was Bill Gates rich, modern day Bill Gates rich. So he had money and he had everything that he could ask for and everything appeared to be going so well for him and all. However, as you can see, everything was, although it was going good, but as you know, as Christian men and women, we can be tested at any time. And sometimes God allows things to happen to us um, for a reason. Um, if you read um, uh, Job chapter 1, verses 6 through 12, and if you can turn with me, Job chapter 1, verses 6 through 12, it reads, and this is the, during the time that um, Satan attacks his character. And this is the time that Satan attacks his character. Now get this. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? 
So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? So Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But now, stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has in your power, only do not lay a hand on his person. Again, he said, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. And as you know, we must understand that as he proceeds on, Satan uh, was given permission by the Lord in order to try, in order to try Job. The Lord was confident that Job would not let him down. But Job went through some 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 horrible times. Job, um, uh, you know, didn't know what to do at all. But he knew to stay faithful. And let me tell you how. If you go to Job's one, Job chapter one, verse thirteen through twenty-two, it tells us that Job loses his property and children for the Sabians, which were South Arabian people from present-day Yemen. Yemen came and took the oxen and donkeys, and while doing so, killed the servants with the edge of a sword. While this was happening, a fire came and burned up the sheep and other servants that belonged to Job. Later, the Chaldeans, which were Arabians from the coast of Persian Gulf, which is known as present-day Iraq, raided the land, stole the camel, and killed the servant as well while doing so. But to make matters worse, a great wind came from across the wilderness, striking the four corners of the house, causing it to fall on the children, killing them all. And, and guess what? And in spite of all that, and trust me, Job was really hurt by that. He was, he was crushed, as any parent or any father would be and all. But in spite of that, he praised the Lord for in Job chapter 1, verse 21 through 22, he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's pretty, that's pretty hard to do. It would be for a lot of us and everything. You would have to be very strong in your faith in order to be able to, to, um, to, to do or to live as Job has lived. In our lives, there are some of us who may have experienced the loss of a loved one, perhaps a child, a parent, property, wealth, um, you know, a job and a good reputation. Um, there are some of us that may have lost property either to fire, natural disasters, foreclosures, repossessions, and so on. We may feel as though our lives as we know it is over. We may feel as though we are a failure. And I know that it is easier said than done, but we must do as Job did and can continue, continue to praise the Lord during the good times as well as the bad times and trust that in the midst of the darkness, there will be light again. We must actually acknowledge that and recognize that. We see things that are happening around us every day, especially today, losing loved ones to the coronavirus, losing loved ones to, to violence that are going on around us. Some of us may have lost our jobs and we love the things that we held dear to our hearts and we feel as though our lives are over and everything. But God finds a way, God makes a way for you to actually look back and be grateful for the hardships. Because if you don't know what hardship is like, you won't have any idea what good fortunes are like. And a lot of times God allows us 
to actually go through things through things for a reason. As I proceed in this lesson, you will find that things get worse for Job. As one would say, how could anything get any worse than that? Well, for we know as Christians that sometimes things get worse before it gets better. Satan now attacks Job's health. Yes, he does. As if you all can turn with me in Job's chapter 2, verse 6 through 7, chapter 6 read, The Lord said to Satan, Very well then, he is in your hands, but you must spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. And that can be very painful and all. So God allows these things to happen for a reason. We've known people and, 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 and even ourselves have gone through and had some health issues. Um, problems so severe that we should have died. But God stepped in and restored our health and life. And he does things in order for us to glorify him. So we have to trust that he's able, even to the point of when we are wondering if we're going to make it or not. We have to trust that his will will be done and he has a reason for doing things that he does. Our life is in his hands. So through that experience, we sometimes question God. But as you witnessed in the aforementioned um, scriptures, and Job didn't. In fact, he praised God. God will not put any more on you than you can bear. I know that we, in, in, in life, the longer you live, the more you would understand, you know, understand it. And as our elders and our seniors used to tell us, keep living. <clears throat> You'll understand it better by and by. But Job was between a rock and a hard place. He was a human, but he was also a devout Christian. Even Job's wife tried to encourage him to curse God and die. For in Job's chapter 2, verses 9 through 10, his wife said to him, Are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. And he replied, Job replied, and he said this, You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? Meaning that not everything in life is going to be peaches and cream and all, but also acknowledge and recognize he's blessed you. And, and in all this, Job did not sin in what he said. Later, Job and three friends, and this is, uh, and this was something, there's a old saying, if you have friends like these, who needs enemies? And as I mentioned a couple of lessons before, some friends can be like elevators. Some can take you up and some can take you down. Well, Job had some false comforters, and I call them false comforters because they were filling Job's head with a lot of, a lot of um, false information and, and pretty much put him in a position where he was looking down on himself and actually questioning his walk with God. Um, Job's friends was named um, uh, Eliphaz, um, the, the Temanite, Balad, uh, the Shuhite, and Zophar, the Neamphanite. Um, who came and tried to discourage him while he was going through his trials and tribulations. They tried to make him feel unworthy and that he deserved all the, the, the misfortunes that was happening to him. So you can imagine how Job was feeling as a result of that. Um, one would even say that, um, you know, you, you were wondering what the motives are, were for his friends. However, God, after chastening the friends, later used them to be part of a greater blessing he had for Job for being faithful. In fact, he was going to punish them severely, but Job stepped in and said, please spare my friends for they know not what they are doing. So God, in a sense, um, used his friends in order, to, um, in, in order for a greater blessing. If you all can turn with me um, and read, uh, and, uh, to read Job, that's chapter 42, verses 12 through 16. Again, that's Job chapter 42, verses 12 through 16, you would understand how God blessed Job. And it reads, Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginnings, understanding that for he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters, and he called the name of the first Jemiah, the name of the second Keziah, and the name of the third Karen Harpooch. 
And I want to stop right here to say this to you, to remind you that at first Job lost everything, but because of his faith and his willingness to stand by God and to be steadfast in everything, he was put in a position where he was able to get those things back. And God can actually work that way in your life if you put him first and you have faith. But a lot of times he would actually um, take you or put you through a test. And that is very important to know that. So in all the land were found, no woman so beautiful as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them an inheritance among their brothers. Now, after this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and grandchildren for four generations. So Job died old and full of days. And I just read that, and that just came from Job chapter 42, verses 12 through 16. And I want to say this to you again. We as Christians must understand that in life, we will be tested. We will go through some things. We will have friends and associates that will make us feel helpless. They will not be helpful. Sometimes family. For they won't be the comfort you need. But as you know, when Jesus left us, he mentioned that they were gonna, he was going to leave a comforter. And we have to remember to actually turn to that comforter. We can't always depend on man. But we must realize that we serve a God who sees all things. And a lot of times we do not know why he does what he does. It could very well be um, what he has done to Job and all in order to test Job to, to see if Job is that, is that follower of God that God knew him to be. And we have to welcome the test. We have to be able to stand the test. We also have to realize and acknowledge that we are in a spiritual warfare. And sometimes we're put in a position where we cannot do it on our own. There were many times throughout this passage through the book of Job, Job had a conversation with God. And you know, he had a conversation with God and he talked with him and asked him, you know, why was he going through those things? But also he was humble and everything. He knew that he entrusted that what God was putting him through he was not going to leave him. We have to be able to have that relationship with God and know that he will not leave us. And we and he will protect us and not allow any more than we can bear. He wants us to have faith and know that he is God and have domain. He has domain over all things. He wants us to have patience and to wait. Do know that he may not come when you want him but he will be there right on time. All you have to do is ask the Savior to help you, to comfort, to strengthen you, and all, and to keep you. Trust me, he is willing to aid you through. Amen. He is willing to aid you, to aid you through. And I want you all to know that um, when all else fails, you know, I want you all to know that the first person you should look to or anything that you do is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just know that he has you in his hands. He knows what you're going through. He knows your every thought. He knows every hair on your body. He is there with you. He will not forsake you. He will not leave you And all. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you to thank you for allowing us to gather together here in your name. Thank you for allowing us to be able to to have this discussion. And thank you for pricking our minds and hearts, preparing our minds and hearts and souls to be able to receive you, Father, and know and to be reminded of how good you are, Father. I'm hoping that what is said today was pleasing to you. Father, at the same time, I would like um, to pray for those who are, who are shut in, who are sick, who are feeling a little impatient, Father, with all that is going on, Father. They're feeling a little down and they're feeling... They're not feeling good about their circumstances. They're, they're, they're in a situation where they're concerned about their health and their family's health, Father. They're concerned about the health of those they cannot actually get to, and they're feeling a little helpless. Father, bless them and remind them, comfort them, give them peace in knowing that you will be there to every beckoning call. But they have to call on you, Father. Remind them that. And Father, be with us until we meet again. This we ask in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. Amen. I want to actually um, mention this to you. Be sure to study the scriptures that were shared here with you through this lesson. Call your fellow members, your church members, and have this discussion. 
be that encourager, that positive encourager uh, that they would need in order to be able to get through this together. For we were not put on this earth in order to um, in order to experience um, the the ups and downs that we've experienced. Let us, you know, let us glorify our Lord and Savior. Let us have faith in Him and knowing that um, He would actually bring us through. Now, in closing, if you have any questions about the lesson, be sure to contact us and we will respond immediately. Please check on each other and, and continue to do that. Now, I love you and I look forward to seeing you again at our next meeting. And our next meeting will be Wednesday, July the 1st. That's next week. Our Sunday service will be on YouTube Live this Sunday morning on June the 28th at 10 a.m. Please contact us if you have any questions or prayer requests um, on the email that is listed on the screen. So until we meet again, have a wonderful week and God bless. Oh,